listening to the Tortoise and Hare Experience. We are extremely excited to welcome back. This is like the third form of you in the third iteration. <laughs> you're 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 part of a very exclusive club, the Three Peter. <laughs> You know, in three different forms of the tortoise and hare experience. Uh, welcome so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Magic in the house. Yeah, and, and I, I'm sure you're you're no stranger to how this works. As we uh, delve into our experiences, uh, so first we're going to let Max go. And she could dive into her experience, and then I'll go, and then we'll kick it off to you. Okay, Max, what have you been experiencing lately? A uh, crazy thing today. I woke up and did not realize that it was Wednesday. I thought it was Tuesday. I had an appointment coming to the house, and I didn't. I I just space that it was Wednesday. Um, all day long, I'm thinking, oh. It's Tuesday, I, I got these things to do, and then my alarm goes off on my phone and says, I have 20 minutes to get to Burbank and be in physical therapy. No! Had to cancel all my appointments, <laughs> redo everything, and then I was like, and I have a show tonight with Patrick Stone. Holy cow. I, my life. That was my experience today. I just wanted to kill people. And myself. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll tell you about my experience, and then we'll get into Patrick's in just one second. Today was the day that just would not end. <laughs> Have you ever experienced that where, where everything was going wrong for me today, too? And I'm just like, dude, I just need to get to bed. <laughs> I'm like, this day just, everything could go, even, in, yeah, I was like, even things that were just today, I was just like, I was like, this is so weird. I'm, I'm like, I, I can't be the only one experiencing something like this um what about you patrick uh, it's definitely in the air like I, I was telling you guys before we actually started recording um yeah i left my wallet out at rehearsal i had rehearsal today with sweet out in the valley and uh man and traffic in la is living up to its name because tonight like the 170 was closed and like you know everything that could have went wrong went wrong you know so i'm running out towards the other end of the uh, the other end of the city when I have to be here with you guys and then luckily you had some technical issues which got me back here on time to get you to bed in time and me as well because I have a flight tomorrow to Minnesota for a show on Friday so yeah you're not the you're not alone and and, and with that you know I, I have to say this a couple days ago I lost my credit card as well and um, I, I don't know. I, I think losing a credit card isn't as bad as how it used to be because I just went on my phone and the, the moment I, I found out that I lost it, I went on my phone, went to my bank account, and then I turned it off and then I reported stolen. Within two, three minutes of me learning that I lost it, it one, one was already going to get issued to me. They already stopped any payments that were on that credit card. And uh, it wasn't like that before where I don't know if you remember the the old days where it's like I lost my credit card. You got to find the phone number, give all this information out. And, you know, and then like three months later, you were issued the card. It was it, it was a process, but it's it just seems so easy now. I, I kind of um, not that I endorse losing anything, but it, it's kind of been pretty easy to do so. I'm always losing everything. Everything. I don't know where I put anything anymore. <laughs> that technology makes it pretty easy to replace things, but it still sucks. You know, so it does. It, well, earlier we were trying to figure out my password for the tortoise and the hare, and I couldn't figure that out. So I had to do a new password so I could let turtle in. And how many passwords do you have? Right. Do you keep just one, or do you have like a different one for every account? Uh, I actually probably have the same one for everything, <laughs> and I get pissed off when it's not that one, and then I'll I'll change the password so it is that one. So basically, if one person finds out how to get into any of my shit, I'm completely <laughs> fucked because it's like yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's that's insane. Um, you know what? Luckily, on my computer. It saves passwords 
So uh, not that I have that problem, but for d- just some different things. Um, yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you what the password is. Oh, you're right. It saves it for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. I, They're just dumbing us down. That's what's happening. Uh, well, hopefully, yeah. I, I like being <laughs> stupid. I hate being smart. And, you know, I sound stupid earlier. I, I couldn't get my microphone to work. You know, so I'm on my iPad rather than at my actual computer. And um, so I have no idea how I look to you guys. I could be like this big, like this big. But fabulous, darling. You look fabulous. I was just thinking this on the way home. I was driving home as I was stuck in traffic and freeways were jammed. I was like, what the fuck happened to sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Like, what is up with my life? I'm here, I'm here today and yesterday, all day on my phone, creating like the content that's going to go on our screen behind us in Minnesota for sweet. And it's like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> who are you like, right now? It's like, why aren't I just like, you know, sitting back, getting a blowjob, fucking slamming some heroin, you know, like the good old days. Right? You know. huh? <laughs> These days are over. <laughs> Thank God, actually. I'm, Thank I'm, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm grateful. But I did. I was thinking, like, what happened to, like, the old, you know, just the cool dude that just kind of sits back and lets his whole future come to him because he's just such a badass. But like now being a badass means like controlling every single facet of everything you're doing all the time. And you know, you've got to be 10 times as creative and yeah, there's tools and technology that make it a lot easier, but that just makes us busier. You know, people are crying, Oh, you're on your phone all day. It's like, yeah, I'm communicating with 30 to 40 to 50 to a hundred times more people than I was when I was, you know, alive before cell phones, you know? So You could just put it down and, you know, nobody bothers you. Like, they have to send you a piece of mail. <laughs> Which I'll never get because I never even check my mail anymore. <laughs> you know? All it is is junk. You know what's funny is I, 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 uh, I, I donate to a, a company. This is funny. Um, and I can't figure out how to cancel my subscription or whatever you call it. They caught me in the Whole Foods uh, parking lot when I was going full vegan at one point, right? And I'm coming out and it's just like, I felt like I was this great person and I'm really, you know, helping the world. And, and, uh, these guys corner me and they're like, we're from the nature conservatory. And like, we save trees. Like we're, we're rebuilding the Amazon one tree at a time. And if you just donate a little bit, you know, we can really, you know, it will help the ozone and, you know, all the people and like, you know, just like, you know, save trees. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I start donating whatever it was every month, $20, $30 every month. But every month they send me a brochure that has to be $30 worth of freaking tree. You know, they send me a book that's like everything we're doing. And it's like, if you're sending this to everybody that is, is donating to you, you're, you're killing more trees than you're, you could possibly be planting. That's true. They got me in the same way but it was uh, Doctors Without Borders. And it was at Whole Foods in the parking lot. And, they, you know, you're running out the door and they get you real fast and they get your credit card. Right. I didn't realize that they were charging my credit card every month. And not like a number that I determined, but what they thought that I should give them every month. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I get yeah. all these bills on my face. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, mine's not even didn't. mine. They didn't. They they were smarter than that. They got like my routing number, so they're like directly withdrawing it from my bank. It's not even something I can cancel on my card, or if like I you know shut the card down, it's gone anyway. You well, try to be a good person, and they fuck you in the ass. Well, here's the thing: <laughs> you, you, you're, have you ever thought of this? Don't do business in a parking lot. Okay. <laughs> right. I mean, they have shit. laptops and computers and like a bench and like logos. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't give to anybody. <laughs> I'm like, they're like, Aww. Oh, do you want to give? I'm like, no, you should be giving to me. How do I get on this, <laughs> on this <laughs> system where your money goes to me? So right. and speaking of that, we have a donate button. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, feel free. <laughs> yeah. Just go ahead and, and get that and donate to us. help us. Um, I, I've got a, um, a charity event coming up for uh, St. Jude's. It's the hotness of Halloween, Halloween hotness, hotness of Halloween. Yeah. Hotness of Halloween. That's and fun. it's at the uh, wax museum in Hollywood. So nice. yeah, I'm going to make a, an appearance. And I've been what night of the week is that? 
I think it's Saturday or Sunday. It's the 21st of October. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna That's be like really a, I can I can throw a rock from my window and hit the wax museum. Yeah, so you have to come. You have to come. There's gonna be a lot of celebrities um, in various costumes. More and... more than last time with the celebrity uh, poker tournament. <laughs> that was pretty fun, though. That was that cool. Was really fun. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 yeah playing cards with uh, Richard Dreyfus and Demi Moore is, and and you, of course, is it's not a, not my idea of a bad bad time. Where was this at? <laughs> Where was this at? And how come I I, I was not invited? <laughs> well, it was for celebrities. Well, you're you're invited to everything, but you're a tortoise. You take too long it's, to get there. It's true. Yeah, okay. Got to hop to it, man. I just found out that I've been spelling tortoise completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and you are Did a I, tortoise. Yeah. So who's the tortoise and who's the hare? <laughs> well, clearly I am the hare. <laughs> well, I'm the right. tortoise. Clearly. <laughs> no. I, I think he's, I knew the answer to that, but oh, okay. Yeah, for, for those of you who don't know, turtle is the tortoise, and I am the hare, a bunny. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what makes sense to you these days? Um, I I know you're kind of getting ready to go out on tour. Do you still get excited about that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite thing to do, and I. I you know, ambitiously chase doing more of it all, all the time, you know? So uh, I've been doing a lot less of it than I would like as far as like long-term tours, but um, you know, we're, we're out, I'm out almost last month was pretty dry, but other than that, I'm pretty much out every weekend, you know, at least doing a couple shows every weekend somewhere on the planet. Uh, so I love it. But, yeah. How but Butterside's been, Butterside's two different been, bands. what's that? How do you balance that with two different bands? Um, it's, I'm still like, it's all about hard charging for Butterside. Butterside's the only thing that really matters to me in the, in the long run. So, uh, but at the same time, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, you have to kind of balance it. You know, uh, my guitar player, Sam is in Dorothy and Faster Pussycat and Logan's out with the Pretty Reckless and he was just out with Corey Taylor or bass player. Elliot is with Corey Taylor as well. And, uh, also plays with Dorothy, um, amongst a million other super badass musicians. So we're all super busy, you know, but, um, but we kind of got to the point where we were touring so much, you know, three months at a time or whatever, or, you know, all over like world tours shit going all the way to Germany through the UK and back. And without the reputation or the kind of band you want to be on tour with the right genre, it makes more sense to really plan and just create great content and great new music and really build your fan base and hopefully, uh, it looks like it's going to pay off pretty soon. The, sh- the phone should ring. There's a, there's a couple of my favorite musicians out there. Some people I really respect that are super successful that, um, that have been threatening to call and bring us out. So we're like, we're on the verge of just a couple of different really great tours. And once that happens, I think Butterside might actually get its really big first, really big break. You know, you think we've had, we've had a bunch by now, but like, I guess. I'll probably always feel like this. Like after I play, I don't know. Once you played Madison Square Garden, then then you still haven't gotten your big break because the big break means you're playing the Sphere in Las Vegas now. You know, it just keeps right. you just keep raising the bar. So, but yeah, uh, and it's long overdue, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, everybody like all the all the big the greats like they had a ten year march to success, and 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 that's when their overnight thing happened, and. You know, to be honest, like it's Butterside was like signed in 2005, late 2015, early 2016. We put out our first record, what, in 2016, September of 2016. So it's like it hasn't quite been 10 years. So I wouldn't mind if we got like there a little sooner than than the rest of uh, our predecessors. But uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It We're due. Not long overdue, I think it's but we're due. It's time. And speaking of the spear, have you been over there? Have you seen that? I saw it from the outside, not when it wasn't finished, so there weren't any graphics up on the dome. But um, but I know where it is, and I've seen the size of it. But I have seen plenty of. I mean, who hasn't seen the video of you two and all that? It's pretty incredible. I was there last week. Yeah. um, Yeah. I mean, I wasn't inside, um, but on the outside and with all the graphics now 
going. It's, That's cool. It's man. incredible. You can see it, you know, for miles and miles away. And, you know, they have this giant emoji that just, you know, winks at you. And it's so cool. And the Death Star. <laughs> like, yeah. Was that thing. real? I didn't. I saw somebody was like, "This is what we're waiting for." Did they really do that? Did you see the Death Star out there in the middle of Las Vegas? Yeah, Lake? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Too cool. Yeah, yeah I've got to yeah. get in my car and drive there. I guess we all got to go to Vegas. <laughs> oh well. <I> know. <laughs> when was the last time you were in Vegas, Patrick? Shit, when was the last time I was there? Uh, with Sweet, we just played the Golden Nugget. And then before that, I was there for Fremont Street. So twice in like the last seven months, I think I've been there. Very cool. Yeah. And spe- yeah. yeah. And speaking of sweet, how did that happen? Um, I believe Polly Brock, uh, Polly, uh, Polly Z, uh, had to take a break. Um, he was too busy with his queen stuff. His, uh, so a window of opportunity opened um, for me to fill in for him. And when I did, it was just an easy switch. You know, he was kind of ready to keep pursuing what he wanted to do. And uh, Sweet was such a good fit for me. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't resist. Um, Mitch Perry had called me two or three years prior. Uh, and they had their eyes on me and I'd actually learned the entire uh, catalog and was ready to jam. And then I don't remember what happened exactly, but, but, uh, but yeah, a few years later I got the call and went down and and in the middle of rehearsal, everybody was just so excited. It was obvious that we were going to do something cool. And the shows just started, you know, really, really, really getting good. The, the, The big shame was, you know, Steve priest, the original member of the band, uh, you know, we were scheduled to tour. I was heading for the airport. It was March 19th of 2020, literally on my way to the airport. We had like a, a two or three week run to do. And, uh, and of course they shut down the airports that day for, cause of COVID. So unfortunately I never got my chance to play with the legend himself, but we are still carrying the torch in his name. Yeah. Wow. I love that band so much. Yeah, who, who doesn't? Who doesn't love to eat, You know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can just hold the microphone out to the crowd. You don't even need to do your job. They'll sing it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to rest your voice. <laughs> yeah. I've, actually, I've always did want to know that. You know, when you know singers do do that, and they let does that annoy you? Like when their people are singing your songs or whatever, and you're just like. You're like, look, <laughs> I'm supposed to be singing here, but all right. You know, d- d- is that annoying or do you appreciate stuff when that happens? I don't think so. I think that's the, you know, when you see a crowd singing so loud that the expression that's on every singer's face I've ever seen experience that is like one of like, wow, um, that's like heaven. Like you're, it's got to be so surreal. Uh, when uh, Butterside just went and did Welcome to Rockville out in, in uh, Daytona and uh, we just recorded this song for a TV show called power hour. And uh, they had it up on the, on the screens in between every band. So you'd hear it. And so by the time we went on stage and played it that day, I kind of cued them in as to where they would sing it. But um, that was kind of, it was, that was something else to hear a few thousand people singing power hour into your face. You know, that's, that's, and that's, and it wasn't even on the scale that I would, you know, I, I dream of, you know, I can't wait till they're just doing it without you even asking or trying. It's just, you know, I've seen the crowd get so loud that you can't even hear the music of the band anymore. And that, that would be one hell of a compliment. Well, I'll tell you what, we are in luck because we just happen to have the song power hour and uh, we're going to play that. And then afterwards, we are going to get super into um, a lot of fun stuff. I can't tell you what. I was about to reveal it, but I was like, no, 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 no. Tease. We are going to tease you. Um, but here, uh, could you tell us a little something about Power Hour? Hell yeah. Uh, my dear friend, Matt Pinfield, a legend in his own right. Um started a podcast with the Danny Wimmer company, Danny Wimmer presents who does all of the big festivals across the country. He's the largest independent concert promoter in the States. Aftershock in, uh, incarceration, welcome to Rockville, bourbon and beyond 
uh, louder than life. Um, so they had this little podcast they started on, on Matt's laptop with uh, Jake Miller over there at DWP. And it was a countdown, like your top 20 countdown. And it got better and better and better until finally they had their own little studio at DWP and it was still on Twitch. And then, uh, I went for a co-host, co-hosting thing. They were, they kept playing our videos and we were like number one for like 19 weeks in a row on a couple of our songs, um, against, you know, the Foo Fighters and Metallica and Falling in Reverse. So it was a real honor to be even placed amongst those bands where we rightfully des- deserve to be. But at the same time, uh, the Power Hour show was giving us this great opportunity to showcase ourselves amongst those those heroes. Uh, but then they had me on as co-host. And when I was there, uh, they asked me, they said, listen, our show's getting picked up for cable or network television by Access TV. Would you guys be willing to write the sound or the, uh, you know, the theme song? So. I ran home and I think it was a week later we turned in this epic uh, song about struggle and the, the fight to be number one. And it just, it, it worked out really well. So we, we wrote the song and they, we, we made a video for it with all of the guys that are on the show, Matt Pinfield, Katie Babs from Sirius and uh, Josh Bernstein uh, producing legend. Uh, so they're, they're all in the video pretending to play instruments along with us. It's a really cool video, but the song turned out super sick. Uh, it doesn't, it's not cheesy like you'd think a theme song would be. It's it's a real song about like overcoming all of your obstacles and pushing through. So very honored to have it there. And it's it's like on every single clip. They'll do an interview with Taylor Momsen or Paul McCartney or or uh, you know Papa Roach or whoever. I mean, every celebrity in the world has started to come through this TV show, and they put out clips like commercials for the upcoming uh, interviews. And at the end of every clip, there's our song Power Hour. So. It's pretty cool. It's it's enough to like if you're having a bad day, you just you know go to their page and watch those, and it's just like okay, all right, making some waves, dude. That song very cool. Uh, the story behind it even cooler, and you know I know you mentioned earlier that you it took a week for you to write this, or did it take a week for you to write it? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Like uh. You know, I called Sam, our guitar player, and I just said, you know, the middle of this one song we have voices is kind of like really, it's just, it needs to be heavy and hard and fast. Like it needs to be like Ace of Spades or something. So that's basically all I had to say to him. And he came back with like, how about this? And it was just like, oh yeah. And then Logan, our guitar player, jumped on the the drum machine and like just got really excited and creative with it. And like we kind of had a basic uh, idea of what it should be. And then I went over and kind of oversaw like where I where I thought the verses and the chorus just should be, how long we should stay on this and that, and then uh, and then yeah, it was in a rough enough state to um, to take over to our our, our new manager's place, uh, and he recorded the vocals for it. And I literally didn't have anything written at all. Uh, the moment I pulled in, like <laughs> the session was at like 3 p.m., and I pull into the driveway at 3 p.m. And I'm like, oh, I'm on the car, just do my warm ups, I'll be right in. I hadn't written a freaking lyric. And that's kind of what I like to do. Cause it's like you're going through all of this shit. And it's like, if you have time to think about it, you're gonna, you're gonna pull in from every little a- avenue. And like, you know, you, you might, t- I personally might twist the reality of something. Whereas like, if I'm really, if pressure's on, it's like, it really forces me to be super honest with myself, get the line done, make something rhyme really cool. You know, uh, so, so I just dug deep into myself really quick and just really pulled out some, some truth and, uh, and it had a lot of attitude. And then, uh, he was a great producer, our manager as well. So he really dug out like this, this monster of a vocal tone out of my throat, which was, uh, you know, two hours later we had the, 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 the master vocal track. And then we sent it over to, uh, to our buddy Chris, who does a lot of work with Corn, and you know, he just did the Flat Black. I think that's the Flat Black record, um, as far as what he's doing now. But um, he just he just took that and produced it. Like we gave him some clean guitar tones, and he added his his idea of what would sound cool on the guitar, uh, as far as the tones go. And uh, there it was. Yeah, it was just like we 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 just did it super fast. And then when we turned it in, there was they were so, so surprised that it, that it turned out that great. They were all so ecstatic, and I was just like sick you know this is happening do you have a uh, favorite studio you like to work out of uh my favorite place to go my home away from home butterside's home away from home is with uh, matt good and tempe he's uh he he's 
famous for asking Alexandria and Hollywood Undead, and he did a Butcher Babies record, Ice Nine Kills. Um, he's got a number one track with Asking Alexandria out right now. Psycho is at number one. So he really knows what he's doing when it comes to active rock. And uh, we go up there and he's like the sixth member of the band. We go up as a unit and we all write together in one room. But uh, he's got this just marvelous kind of a an outside perspective. And he's got, you know, he's kind of got an emo feel to him. You know, he was in a band with Skrillex. He was... It was called From First to Last. They had a band together, super emo, but rock and metal, but champion musician and uh, just an incredible intuitive producer. It's like he just starts grabbing the screen and moving things around or, you know, he grabs into the air. And it's just like before you know it, the song kind of has developed a character that was different than it was coming in. And uh, he, he pushes us to kind of do things that we wouldn't have done before which I'm super happy about because I would stick to some kind of retro rock. You know, that's where I'm from. And yet Mm -hmm. his style kind of twists and turns everything into, into something that is what Butterside is now today. It's just, it's kind of, it's, it's unique. It's melodic. It's heavy. Uh, it's, you know, it's Butterside. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, that's my favorite studio for sure. His place. Nice. I have to go visit that one. I haven't been up there. It's kind of, it's an invite only and Matt's places. It's a little tight. You know, my, Matt's a cool guy. He, I'm sure he would love to meet you. It's, but you know, it's pretty expensive too, but well worth it. You know, um, we got recommended our attorney, Eric German made the call and like kind of made the whole thing happen, you know? Uh, German. yeah. You know, Eric, everybody knows Eric. Everybody <laughs> knows Eric. Yeah. He's the best. <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah. Um, so wanted to pick your brain about this and, um, I'm a, I'm a sports fan. Are you a sports fan? Uh, you know, I'd like to be, but I'm a Raider fan. So <laughs> sorry. Oh, it's no. been pretty painful for years. You know, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, the best thing in the world. You know, they were like the winningest team in football and, uh, you know, it's not that way anymore. It kind of turns me off to all sports. I mean, I like to play. You don't get me wrong. If I get the opportunity to, to, you know, compete with my friends on anything, I'll do it. But, uh, but yeah, I don't really feel I'm not following basketball or, or, ba- or baseball and even football right now. I'm not just not following because my poor Raiders. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the Raiders just won on uh, Monday night against the, the, the Packers. So it was, it was a riveting uh, game. I was watching it, but all right. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a Charger fan personally, um, but um, I, I say this because you know, right now the the Dodgers just lost in um, in baseball, so they're out. They're out of the playoffs, and it's so weird how sometimes like something like that can like propel you to have a bad day, or you know, and we shouldn't let such trivial things like that like affect us. Right, and uh, and I, I I guess I was wondering if do you let like little trivial things like like a baseball team or even the Raiders, uh, you know, losing kind of yeah. affect you? For sure. Well, I, we went out. Uh, I went out when they were playing the Steelers. Uh, I was out and about and like uh, you know got down to like the last five minutes or whatever, and it seemed like the Raiders had this chance to you know have a miracle happen you know and i was just like i was so in it because i was just like they're gonna do it they're gonna do it like and then they they managed to get like right to the point where they could have taken the game and then uh our 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 new quarterback threw an interception you know and it was just it's heartbreaking and then yeah you know i went i showed up at the restaurant i was going to and it was just like everything was bumming me out for a little while and and that's kind of the night i was like okay i've got to take myself out of this and like it's funny because like I am a Raider fan, but like I did not pay attention to. I think I had some. I mean, I had a lot going on uh, on Monday, but I should have been paying attention to the game. I didn't even know they won, so I'm I'm excited. There's still hope, uh, you know. So maybe that'll make my night better. But uh, but yeah, if they lose, you know, I'm I'm bummed out. I'm bummed out with all of us, the whole Raider Nation. So yeah, it can affect you. <laughs> I had a fan that, um, which is a weird word to begin with. But he used to come to all of my signings and he would have his face painted in Raider colors and wear a snake and his car was all Raiders. And he would do like Raider Nation radio and 
you know, always talk about me on it. And um, I felt that was like odd because I'm an Eagles and Dolphin fan. You know, so I was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but they have hardcore fans. Their yeah. Fans are like, Speaking of, of Eric German, he's he's a hardcore Raider fan. He's always at the games. He took me to one in Vegas, and it was funny to be sitting there because com- coming from, you know, my hometown is near Oakland, so that's why I was a Raider fan to begin with. And it's like this dirty, gritty, you know, uh, brand, you know. It's like we're proud to be, like, you know, ugly and 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 dark and evil, you know. Uh, and, then, and then you show up in Las Vegas, everything's shiny and new. I was like spitting on the floor you know just to like make myself feel at home like it's just too new and i think they just need to dirty it up a little bit i don't know what they need to do but uh i think we'll get it back they've they're gonna we're gonna end up on top if they've got money like they do in las vegas i can't help but you know foresee that the uh you know the leadership's gonna gonna escalate to a, a better a better place you know i think they're gonna be a lot stronger than they've ever been very soon i don't know if it's not necessarily <laughs> fair <laughs> you know the more money that these teams have like the better they get it's like that's not fair Can you just hey, it's the truth with everything yeah. though you know the more money i have the better my videos are you know the more it's money you true. have the nicer your bus is the more you know the longer <laughs> everything's better with money period that's right yeah. which uh reminds us to donate <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Enter the show dot com and uh, click that <laughs> donation button. And help, uh, help us. Everything would would be better with money. Um, by the way, that's a great name for like a song. <laughs> you know, everything's better with money. And um, I don't, I don't know. D- does inspiration come like that to you, where someone's like, "That's actually a, a, a good lyric or a good name of a of a song"? I mean, not really. I'm more of a f- I come from more of a spiritual and heartfelt place with my, with my lyrics. I don't think I've ever sang about like money and, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just, that doesn't seem to be, I mean, it would make this life a lot better, but I don't, I don't find that to be my purpose or my, my meaning. It would, I think that, uh, it's important that people in power can find a way to showcase what we're doing. Uh, but I don't really think, you know, I could give a fuck less if I make a dollar as long as I get to sing up there and have the people sing back to me like we were talking about earlier. That's the goal. Like, I'll be happy if I have enough money. Uh, I learned from the best, you know, I, I would roadie and I, I, you know, the band was signed by Lemmy. Uh, I watched him, uh, you know, on a daily basis, uh, interact and live his life. Like, you know, the only thing that mattered was the rock and roll and, and the people that he connected with. And uh, as long as he had enough to buy his Jack and Coke, he didn't give a fuck, you know, so... I would like to be that way. I don't need a Jack and Coke because I don't drink anymore. So uh, <laughs> I'm easily pleased. I just want to work. <laughs> Very cool. You know, it's so weird that you bring all that up uh, only because I was just having this conversation literally today about someone. They were showing me their animation and they were telling me about that. They were doing this. They're like, well, I'm, I'm doing this so I can make money off of it. And I and I told her the, the the not the same exact thing, but I was just like, you know what? If you're doing something to make money, chances are it's probably not going to work. I'm like, it's usually the people that do stuff for the the art and just just to do it that it ends up working for. Is, is that just a theory you think, or, or do you think that's real? I mean, it can go both ways. Like. Uh... I love singing for sweet. I have a couple of other bands that I sing for that make me enough money to pay the bills, you know? Um, and I enjoy it very, very much, but I did realize a while back that, you know, on this path to success with my own group, uh, you know, the sacrifices just never stop. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to do that no matter what. I'm going to pour everything that I get from everywhere else. But, you know, I, I did, you know, I, I'm not afraid to spend some of my time every day to make sure that I kill it financially uh, while still, you know, <laughs> surrendering everything else I have for what I, I want, you know. So it's a it's a balance, but it's definitely a give and take. Yeah, definitely. We've been doing this show for 10 years or longer and and uh we make no money <laughs> right but we know, it's, uh, it's, but 
Yeah, we do it for the love, though. You know what I mean? We do it for the love. And, you know, um, we get to talk to people like you and, you know, get your music out there and your words and uh, your attitude, which is always an inspiration to me personally. Nah. Well, I'm glad you're doing it. You know, every person that we connect with, if we connect with one person because of this, it's worth it. Um, you know, so many times from interviews and stuff, we, we, we'll tap on something and then, you know, somebody will end up in my DMs. And especially when we start talking about like, uh, you know, the recovery part of the story or, you know, just anything that finds that connection, you know, anything that we can ever talk about that's heartfelt, you know, that's, that's, you know, we can make a difference, you know, platforms like this, your show, it's like, you never know who you're going to hit or what they're going to hear that's going to make a difference in their lives. And that's that's why we do it, you know, instead of just sitting home and watching South Park, which is probably what I'd be doing if we weren't doing this <laughs> <laughs> at the moment. Gotcha. Have you, have, what, what, what's your latest show that you've been kind of obsessing with? Uh, I'm a huge Star Wars geek, so uh, the Ahsoka Oh, yeah. Series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, you know, the show would come out and I'd just keep watching it on repeat until the next episode came out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Total dark. Did, did you watch all the stuff before the Clone Wars and the, uh, the Rebels? All of it. You can't ask me anything and I won't know. Oh, yeah. my God. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Great. Oh, with Ahsoka, you have to watch the Clone Wars. You know, because right. there's little Easter eggs and stuff that you want to understand. Right. You know, but... Yeah, I try to explain that to so many people, and they're like, "What? Animated? What? <laughs> Who? What? Who?" You're like, "Bro, you, there's like this whole side of every. There's so much more to every character because of all the stuff they do that didn't get popular." You know? Yeah, it's the glue. You know? Exactly, exactly. And um, if you haven't watched Clone Wars, you are tardy to the party. And if you haven't watched Rebels, you know, go do it now. And um, uh, it's it's really enriching. Do you feel that like you've laid the groundwork, kind of like in the Clone Wars and Rebels, for kind of who you are now? Uh, like comparing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were a Jedi fighting me. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. No. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully this new version of Butterside will catch as much attention as Ahsoka did and then shine light on my Rebels, which would be like the previous two albums. You know, maybe people will go back and check that out and be like, whoa, dude, these guys have been around for a minute and it's it's sick. And yet, at the same time, I can compare the three of those things to all of that as well because it just keeps getting better and better and it's like the difference between my old stuff is definitely like, like like an animated series compared to like a live action full VFX series, you know? So, so yeah, I think I've paved the, uh, paved the way. Yeah. Do, do you, have you ever done an animated music video? Oh yeah. There's tons of ours. Ours we've done. Uh, I have this guy, Pablo Condes on uh, South America. Uh, he's uh, just awesome the first one he did for us was the pardon me video and that song i wrote for lemmy so he created this entire video about like my relationship like meeting him being his roadie and like the whole thing is depicted with great illustration and then like his his dying and then my band taking the stage and him kind of like basically handing uh you know the 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 torch to me and the group. And then uh, like we ride off into the, in, into space and in the, in the motorhead van of Snaggletooth on the front. It's pretty, it's super wicked. And then that opened the door to doing all of the lyric videos. And I was trying to keep up with a lyric video for every song for a while, but uh, there's like four or five of them before we finally just, I just started pouring everything into the, into the official videos, but the, the lyric videos are out there and they're, they're a story into themselves uh, we just did a show at the bourbon room. And the coolest thing is, is that now we're stepping into like more of a visual, you know, we had the visual board behind us, the whole screen and everything. And thinking again, of the sphere in uh, Las Vegas, it's like a band is definitely, you know, God, it's so much cooler to see stuff, you know, along with the band, like not just, you know, not just lights and stuff. It's cool to have a lot of visual. So you strip away the lyrics from those lyric videos and it's just pure animation, which tells the story of the songs right behind us. So it's kind of a, a cool step into a new world having all of that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely down for animated uh, lyric videos or videos as well. 
official thing as well. Very I cool. met uh, Lemmy in where well, I was on tour with Alice Cooper in the late '80s, '90s, and we were in uh, London, I think. And there was this really cool bar where you had to go through the kitchen and through a refrigerator and down these stairs, and in the bottom was this little secret club, and there he was at a pinball machine, <laughs> and um, just the nicest person that you could possibly meet. He was so sweet. And it was like, I, you know, you're just thrown because <laughs> he was just a, a stunning figure of a man, you know, yeah. just his presence was just inspiring. Yeah, I need, like, that's another reason to strive for greatness, because the cool thing about him is he had his uh, security detail around, you know, and if you were cool, you didn't even notice they were there, you just you just met new friends, uh, and, you know, like you, if somebody walks up and they have something to them, Lemmy was the first one that would want to get to know you, you know, but if you weren't cool and you were irritating him at all, he, you know, he probably had a little hand signal or a little, you know, do this or something security knew to get that person the hell out of there. You know, and unfortunately I'm still falling victim to many conversations. I don't wish, wish to stay in, but you know, you've got to do it. You go out in Hollywood and everybody wants to talk, you know, do, do yeah. you, do you, I mean, do, do you want to reveal this? If you have a secret, like, you know, things so like people know, like, Hey, get me out of this or, or something. No, cause I don't have a security detail. <laughs> if I did, I would definitely let them know because they have their eyes on me. And then we start talking to somebody it's like, Hey, Oh my God, it's so great to see you. You know, and that's it. This means get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like you should, you, you should know. start like chewing your hair. Like, Oh my God, I'm chewing my hair. That means give me the fuck out. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, something, you know, yeah. something. I mean, you know, you got to shoot a mind. Like, Let's hope that we don't run into anybody that we have to dismiss like that. But, you know, you got to plan for the worst sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's time is sacred. And you know what? Sometimes people don't don't realize that. And they occupy your time kind of a lot. And you're just like, I, I, I totally get it. Because I'm the occupier of the time. <laughs> and, you know, you just don't want to be rude or hurt anybody's feelings, you know. So it's nice to have somebody around you that can just kind of, like, remind you that you've got somewhere to be or something to do. You know, because I'll just sit there being nice all day and listen to people's problems and like try to figure out where I can, where I can be of some good in this situation. Why did God put me here to figure it out? You know, and instead I should just be on my way. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of which, but it enriches your life. Yeah. yeah. And, and we are about to be on our way, but Patrick, you have brought us a gift. And uh, we are very excited. Would you like to talk a little bit about this? The gift. Yes. The gift of a song. Uh, which which one do we have? Oh, oh, shit. Okay, yeah. So we did Ghost Lighting and we did Power Hour, right? Ghost Lighting was in the uh, spirit of Halloween. Uh, and I'm probably going to get killed for this is what I said. But uh, So singing for Sweet, the cool thing is we finally have our own original song coming out. Uh, we're going to debut it uh, this this uh, Friday in Minnesota at the Treasure Island show with a bunch of big screens and everything else. So it will be out there. So by the time you hear this, uh, it should have been out there in the in the uh, atmosphere. So uh, here it is. This is called Little Miracle. I'll see you. You look at me. You are wonderful. 